Dissecting the budget. Understanding what Rachel Reeves' budget yesterday means to you and your business. Today is brought to you by Synergy Success, Bounce Back Studios, in association with Prosper Squared. Synergy Success and Prosper Squared are the market-leading business clubs. The world's first. Here today, we have our guest speakers, or our guest stars, really, our, our experts Thanks, in the man. field, from THL, Chartered Accountancy. Um, please introduce yourselves. Thanks. Thank you, Nick. Thank you for uh, inviting us over. Lovely to see you again. Um, I'm Paul Thatcher. I'm the Managing Director of THL Chartered Accountants, and we love helping businesses. So we love helping them make more profits and pay as little tax as possible so they keep, everyone keeps more in their pocket. That's fantastic. And Paul, may I say, that jacket is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I dress specially for you, Nick. <laughs> Thank you so much. Jack? Lovely to see you again as well. Thank yeah, you for being um, here. Likewise, Nick, great to see you. Um, so yeah, I'm Jack Crawley. I work at Tisha Accountancy with Paul. Um, yeah, so I'm a, a, I'm a qualified accountant. And um, yeah, I've, I've, been, I've been there about, about, about six years now. So Superb. going strong. <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. And Charlotte, lovely to see you too. Hi, Nick. Thank you for having us. So I'm Charlotte Fitch. I'm one of the tax experts at THL Accountancy with Paul and Jack. Fantastic, thank you. Right, well, look, let's dive straight in. Let's talk about the headlines that we've had um, from the, the Grim Reaper yesterday, more commonly referred to as Rachel Reeves. Um, <laughs> so, Paul, yeah, what are the headlines? Well, it was kind of a relief to get the budget out of the way, wasn't it? The speculation uh, for the four months prior has been uh, has been quite difficult, really, to, for us to manage. I guess we've got we've had a lot of very worried clients. They've been phoning us many times a day. Um, and it was nice to kind of get it out of the way. We were expecting uh, bad news, and we did get bad news, but perhaps it wasn't as bad as everyone, as everyone feared. Um, uh, I wish I had a penny for every time I heard the mention of the 22 billion black hole. Clearly, the government needs to raise, raise money. Um, there's a lot of measures been announced. The major one is the employer's NIC, which I think is going to raise about 25 billion. Um, probably not been a very friendly budget for businesses, but of course, I think they've tried their best to look after the working person. Yeah, the working person, still, still to be defined, isn't that? You know, yeah. the working person. Fantastic. So other than the, the sort of the national insurance contributions, what are, what are the other headlines that we're looking at? So, um, yeah, on top of the Nas employer's national insurance, we've got um, some increases to capital gains tax, inheritance tax, stamp duty or SDLT, a bit of a tweak to VAT, uh, and a little surprise thing that Jack is going to tell us about later. Ah, interesting. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. Uh -huh. So let's dive straight in. Let's uh, have a look at looking at the employer's side of things. Uh, obviously, Prosper. Uh, is a business club. Synergy Success is a business network. Um, all of our members are business owners. You know, so what has actually affected the business owners? Yeah, so the main one is employers' national insurance. Um, as Paul mentioned earlier, there's been something of an assault on businesses. Um, <laughs> it's, uh, it hasn't been a good. It hasn't been a good budget for them, especially for those smaller, sort of medium-sized businesses looking to grow um, ambition has been slightly trampled here. Um, so employers' national insurance, that um, itself has gone up from 13.8% up to 15%, so 1.2% rise. And then what the real sort of kicker is, is the secondary threshold. So when they start contributing, um, that's gone from 9,100 all the way down to 5,000. So that's a, lot of, that, that's a lot of people being caught in that extra sort of um, tax now. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be noticeable. Wow. Okay. So, so, Jack, what's the extra cost for a company employing someone who earns, say, 30,000 a year? Yeah. So, so 30k is about sort of roughly the, the average salary. Um, so, the cost for the employer for that, due to this sort of rise and also the, the drop in the threshold, is about 865 pounds per employee. So, if you multiply that up, some someone with sort of 10, 15 employees. Wow, so it's, very... a, it's a sizable impact. It isn't something you can just sort of brush away and. Um, okay, yeah. so th this is actually a taxation, an attack essence, in essence, on 
businesses, so small businesses, the, you know, where we're talking about getting more people back into employment, you know, we have that desire to, to increase our economy. Surely that comes from people being employed and it's now more difficult to employ people. Is that correct? Yeah, it definitely, it definitely could be. Um, so employers, they've got a bit more to think about now when, when sort of going out to the, to the job market and um, looking to employ someone. There isn't just that base salary cost of the employer's national insurance cost, which employees won't, won't sort of notice this as such because on their pay slip, this is nothing, this is nothing to do with them. It doesn't affect their take home pay. Yeah. But as a business owner, there's a lot, there's a lot to think about and there's, and, and, and there's more to actually be paying. Um, yeah. So, Jack, there is some help for smaller businesses, though, isn't mm. there, with the employer's allowance? So, yes. explain how that works. Yeah, so employment allowance, that's a credit against um, a business's employer's national insurance contributions. Um, so, that's £5,000, um, and then it's going to be rising to £10,500 uh, from the start of the next tax year. So, obviously, that's just over doubled. Um, is that going to make a huge difference? It will for some. It will for some. So, so, so those on the sort of the lower end, sort of two, two, three employees, they'll sort of see some, some benefit. But if you're, like I said, that ambitious business looking to grow, looking to take people on, um, when you hit sort of six, seven employees and upwards, yeah, your sort of tax bill is going to, it is going to rocket. Um, and that employment allowance is not going to help you. Yeah. So again, yeah. more problems, more problems for businesses out there. Definitely. Okay, so let's move on from, from looking at national insurance and the other big thing everybody's talking about, uh, and I think probably this is one best for you, Charlotte, capital gains tax. Yeah, so um, capital gains tax has, I think, been a really big uh, change, actually, from this budget. Um, so as of yesterday, the capital gains tax rate has actually, um, for just normal, like capital gains that aren't residential property, that's now increased from... 10, uh, 10% to 18% for basic rate taxpayers and then from 18, um, from, <laughs> from 20% to 24% for uh, higher rate taxpayers. So that is quite an increase. That's a huge increase, isn't it? So if we're looking at that, 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 that lower end, should we say, sort of 10 to 18%, that's an 80% increase. Well done, Nick. See my maths there. I did work that one out there. But that, that is a huge increase. That, that, that's going to really start hurting people. So uh, ultimately, it's, if you're going to be disposing of a business, I assume. Uh, yeah, so that will affect if you're selling your, your business and your shares in your business. Um, and before you had uh, business asset disposal relief, well, you still have that. But as of April, uh, the rates on that are actually going to change as well. So from April 25, that's going to go from um, a million pounds at 10%. It's still going to be a million pounds, but that's actually going to be 14% um, tax. And then the following year in April, um, it will then go up again to 18%. Wow. That's massive, massive increases. So again, anybody that's looking to have built their business, maybe looking to come into a retirement or later life, it's, uh, that's going to be difficult. That's going to be difficult to dispose of a business. But th there, are, th there are these things called EOTs, is it? Employment Ownership Trusts, which I've heard a lot about in, in recent times. Uh, can you can you expand on that at all? Nick, for? employee ownership trusts, we absolutely love them to pieces. Yeah. So um, just to give you a flavour, so as a business owner, you can sell your business to an employee ownership trust and you pay capital gains tax at 0%. Uh, hang on. Okay. So you will pay 0% compared to, say, 24 if you sold it normally. Yeah, so if you sold your business, you would get business asset disposal relief. Yeah. So before April 25, yeah. you paid 10% on the first million. After April 25, you pay 14%. And then April, after April 26, you'd pay 18%. Okay, so. So, but they, so the Labour government have kept, kept EOTs. Um, there's a couple of, couple of tweaks that are probably worth noting without diving into too much detail. Um, so the first one is that if you sell part of your business, the business owner has to give up control to the employee ownership trust, which can be, for some, a bit of a difficult bridge to cross. Um, and the second point is that for the 0% capital gains tax for the seller to remain intact, 
the business has to remain as a qualifying business for four years. Um, the issue there, of course, is the, own, the, the previous owner has given up control and the Employee Ownership Trust could steer the business into a different direction so it doesn't then qualify and end up with Charlotte's 18%. Wow. Should not be a not be a helpful thing to someone's retirement ambitions. I, I just want to know this is not on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, the hatchet lady with the Grim Reaper. She's uh, she certainly struck there, hasn't she, with the capital gains tax? It's interesting. It, uh, we talk about trying to improve businesses and, and, and aid them, and help them, so we can create greater employment. But it just seems that they they're, they're attacking those businesses time and time again. Yeah, Nick. I think it's. I mean, I've worked in tax for quite a long time. I know I look very youthful, but I have been qualified since 1990. Uh, and even then we had uh, a thing called retirement relief, where a business owner would pay 0% capital gains tax on the, on the first 500,000 of gain, which back then... 500,000 was, was a lot of money, wasn't it? A lot of money. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> right. Fantastic. Okay. Well, look, let's move on from, from looking at the businesses. Um, a lot of our clients within Synergy Successor and certainly with Prosper Squared, um, they have their children in private education. Now, I've heard lots, you know, Rachel Reeves has introduced the VAT on that. Can you expand a little bit further on, on what's happened there? Yeah. So, like you say, it's, it's been pretty heavily rumoured. Um, it's not something that's been, that's been ignored in the media. Um, so there is VAT now on uh, private school fees, so that's standard rate, 20% VAT. Um, so that will be getting charged on school fees. Um, sorry, school fees on private school fees. That's the very important point. On private school fees, there'll be, um, yeah, 20% standard rate of VAT. So I'm trying, I'm a little bit lost in understanding how that is going to increase any revenue to the government, you know, charging 20% tax. <laughs> Because, Paul, can, if you explain well, to everybody well, a bit about yeah. how that behaves. Yes, works. Nick. I did, yeah, so uh, my understanding is that your old school, Eton... I wish. Um, one of the things with VAT is that, uh, well, Eton will have to register for VAT. And so we'll pay VAT over, but be able to reclaim VAT on all of its capital purchases and improvements, swimming pools, hockey pitches... Um, whatever else over the last 10 years. So my understanding is that they are going to be able to reclaim millions and millions um, from their capital expenditure for the past 10 years. So the, the money from Eton is going to be flowing the wrong way. It makes no sense. The, you know, in, introduce VAT on the fees itself, but then you know, the schools can then claim back for 10 years. Yeah, it, it's creating a bigger hole, isn't it? Exactly. Okay. Well... Now moving on from, from sort of school fees itself, you know, when we're looking later in life, when we're looking at, unfortunately, passing away and looking at that Grim Reaper that, that's out there, she is looking to tax even further on IHT itself. Is that correct? Yeah, so um, being the oldest one here, Nick, apparently, <laughs> um, yeah, falls on me to have a, have a quick look at the IHT changes and lots of things have been mooted so there was talk about the potentially changing the rates um, and maybe perhaps getting away with the, um, perhaps eliminating the residential nil rate band. But in fact, all those have, have stayed the same. Um, where the change has been basically on businesses and agricultural property, so, so farms. So, um, just to explain briefly how inheritance tax works, so uh, passing, passing wealth down the generations, uh, and if that includes a residential property that you live in, then the first £500,000 is free of inheritance tax. Then after that, uh, the tax rate is 40%. 40, 40 so, for example, an estate of £1.5 million pays 40% on the £1 million over the 500,000, and so that estate would have an inheritance tax bill of 400,000. Wow. Um, and obviously the, the issue can be if the estate is fairly illiquid, so full of assets that are not read, readily saleable, then there's a, 
there's problems for the executors to raise the monies and pay the inheritance tax. So um, prior to the budget, there was 100% inheritance tax relief on business property. Um, so for example, if, if someone um, left a company, trading company, worth 10 million pounds, that could be handed down the generations, no inheritance tax. And my understanding of the idea behind that is that it's good for the business because the business can carry on yeah, continuity. uninterrupted. Um, and it therefore is good for the country because the business carries on paying its taxes in ongoing fashion. So the change is that the first million pounds of value for business property uh, is still exempt from inheritance tax. But after a million pounds, the rate will be one half of the normal rate of inheritance tax, so 20%. So if you have, for example, a company worth 11, make, make, let's make the number simple, Nick. I know you like that. <laughs> Thank you. So boy. we have a company worth 11 million, then the first million is, is free of inheritance tax, and there's 20% inheritance tax due on the rest of the value of 10 million. So there's a inheritance tax bill of 2 million pounds which effectively the company would need to raise to be able to keep going. And that's not always a very easy thing to do. So again, another attack on businesses, maybe you know, a situation where people will be losing their jobs because the, the company can't continue. Exactly. And I mean, it's a similar, on farms don't make an awful lot of money, and, but they do have high, you know, they have some decent capital values which is the reason that a lot of farmers keep going. And another reason they keep going is that they have been able to pass the farm down, down the generations without suffering inheritance tax. Yeah, I think our, our good friend Jeremy Clarkson's been raving about this, hasn't he? He's not, he's not a happy bunny. No. And, um, yeah, he's, he, um, yeah, well, he, uh, yeah, he's not happy with the thought of paying inheritance tax on Diddley Squat Farm. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that these changes come into effect April 26. Okay, so turn off the light. Given, given Jeremy's health, <laughs> um, perhaps there will be 100% available on Diddley Squat Farm, but... Yeah, you um, never know, yeah. you never know. Okay, well, that's, that's interesting. Well, look, let, let's go back to looking at the, the type of members that we have within, uh, within Synergy Success itself, in particular. Um, so it's a trades networking group. So we've got a lot of these guys, uh, that the construction industry. So if we just jump back slightly to look at that national insurance contributions for the employers, uh, sorry, for the trades businesses, and look at then, say, maybe subcontractors? Yeah, so... As I mentioned, the employers' national insurance contributions have gone up, so it's a consideration when employers are sort of bringing someone in onto their payroll. Um, in the construction industry, they've got the construction industry scheme, um, where they sort of engage with subcontractors, um, which are different from employees. Um, they operate separately. Um, so a subcontractor, if, if, if a construction firm was to sort of engage with subcontractors rather than employees, they're going to be saving themselves on that employers' national insurance. So any sort of construction business owners look at using those sort of lo local sub traders and um, yeah, so look ra at the engagement. Than, yeah, 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 rather than sort of going down the payroll route um, and suffering that additional tax. Yeah. And let's let's also stay on uh, on the, the construction industry and traders in particular. Yeah. Um, Something was snuck through, really, wasn't it? It wasn't raved about much in, in the well in the budget Definitely. yesterday. It wasn't a headline. Uh, um, <laughs> and this is looking at the, the you know the standard workhorse vehicle um, mm. of the construction industry, the twin cab, yes. twin cab um, pickup. So, Jack, please explain a little bit more. Yeah, it's the double cab pickup. It's been um, sort of a staple, as you say, of the construction industry, um, as it's been classified as a van for capital allowance purposes, and that means it's not subject to uh, a hefty benefit in kind as a, as a car. Um, there was um, debate about this a couple of months ago um, when they decided to reclassify the car. That was then uh, U-turned within the week um, after a lot of criticism. 
um, and it's been re-snuck in to the budget now. Um, so as of 6th April 2025, um, double pickups will be classified as cars, which is going to have a benefit and kind of impact, um, definitely. Don't worry if you've got one now, you won't be sort of subject to, to the, to the higher rate. Um, you'll get away with that until 2029 or, or obviously, um, if you dispose of it. Um, so everyone's yeah. going to be going back to the old transit van then, are we? They could be, yeah. Because if you look at a Ford Ranger, for example, um, a typical sort of based on the carbon emissions of that, it's going to attract a 37% um, rate. And if you, I don't know how much they sort of, sort of 30k maybe. If you look at that compared to um, sort of if it was classified as a van, it's, it's about 4k compared to a sort of 12k. It's, wow. Um, it's, yeah, it's huge. <laughs> Big changes there. Big yes, changes there. Definitely. Okay, so. Let's move on. Let's start talking about the, the families at Southam as well. You know, we, we, we grew our businesses, you know, we, we paid all those taxes for, for bringing the extra employees in. Um, but what we're now looking to do is we're looking to build our property portfolio. So we're looking to buy a buy to let rent property or even maybe a second home um, that we can, we can take our children to at the weekends. Where does that sit? What's happened with SDLT or stamp duty? Yeah, so stamp duty is taking a hit in this budget too. Um, if you're looking to buy a second property, that's now going to, the additional rate's now gone up 2%. So it was 3%. It's now gone up to 5%. I don't know if you can tell me what percent that's gone up by. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, actually, it's actually gone up by 67%. So that is a big increase on buying that second property. And that, that will affect people, say, buying their second homes or, or people trying to build their property portfolios. If they're a landlord or that's yeah. that's going to be a big hit to them, and it might put people off renting, which will affect will affect the families. If there's not the rental properties out there, there's nowhere to rent. <laughs> See, well, we, we're building lots of houses, aren't we? According to uh, the Labour government, they're going to have to build a lot. But by the sounds of it, it's going to be more expensive to buy them for those for those property landlords out there to then rent out to the companies or to the to the lower income families that can't afford to get a mortgage. So, lots yeah. there seems to be lots of own goals going on here. Lots of own goals with the with the budget that that the uh, the hatchet lady or as I call it, the Grim Reaper, has come out with. <laughs> okay, so it's it's been interesting looking at what we're at what we're discussing with regards to business itself. But moving over to the actual family themselves, is there been any benefits there? Is there anything that that we need to be made aware of looking at the sort of lower income families? Um, yeah, so like minimum wage, for example, that's that's increased, um, and, and, and national living wage that's also increased. Um, so that's a positive for the for the people, for like employees, and and like say the sort of lower income, there's a bit more take home pay there. But as I sort of double back to, who's funding that? <laughs> yeah, the businesses. It's, it's, it's these small to medium businesses, and um, it's yeah, it's, it's just an another hit it's another cost on top of everything else that's going on outside of all these um tax changes it's a it's another it's another increase they've got to just take fantastic okay well look we, we've gone through i think most of the budget is it is there anything else that we're missing that we need to be thinking about need to be talking about uh, just a quick one on inheritance tax okay nick that i didn't mention previously so um, from April 27, um, pension, unused pension pots are going to be charged inheritance tax. Okay, so we've got our estates being taxed, we've got our businesses being taxed, and now they're also going to be taxing our pension. Taxing our, yeah. So, um, just to put it in context with, context with pension, so the good news is, that the rules haven't changed as far as tax-free lump sums have stayed the same, the amount you can contribute into a pension has stayed the same, so that's a positive. But a lot of business owners um, do like to have self-invested personal pensions which own their company premises, which works very, very well. Um, so if you've got a uh, self-invested personal pension which owns a million pounds worth of commercial property, which is rented by your trading company, then it's going to be another £400,000 um, inheritance tax bill when you shuffle off the Morgan coil. Wow. 
So again, it seems to be attacking business owners time and time again. Uh, yeah, I think you look back from when I was a child and, you know, the Labour government was always about this, you know, the independent individual, the shopkeepers of the world, you know, bringing people across to create more employment. We're just attacking these people time and time again. I would like to get one more little jab in there for businesses as well, actually. As you mentioned, shopkeepers, so the retail, hospitality and leisure sector, so RHL, business rates. So yeah, we forgot at the mention. moment, they've got a 75% discount. That's set to expire at the end of this tax year. Um, so that'll be, they will get a uh, sort of a discount, but it's only 40% now, um, which has been sort of, uh, published as a positive, but it's a, it's a, it's a drop from 75% to 40%. But what they're actually paying, Jack, so they were paying 25%, yeah. now it's 60%. Yeah. So that's, that's, it's, it's, that's more huge. than doubled. Yeah, it's huge. That's, I can, yeah, I can get that one. I can work that percentage out there. <laughs> <laughs> Just about. So if you think about that, for the RHL sector though, combined, the business rates, combined with the sort of employers NIC changes, employee um, sort of the national minimum wage these are the ones that again hit the hardest aren't they sort of like imagine having 20 like a restaurant with sort of 20 staff or something they're really feeling the and we, we know that restaurant margins are small yeah and the squeeze is is undoubtedly going to mean some business failures yeah absolutely absolutely and again potentially more tax loss there as businesses fail exactly it, well, it's they, crazy. They have tried to put some positives on the hospitality industry, haven't they? Because they've reduced the alcohol duty by 1p per pint, haven't they? 1p per pint. <laughs> they, well, let's get to the pub then. <laughs> <laughs> we can all make a saving. <laughs> <laughs> that's ludicrous. Well, it's, yeah. it's you know, I, I suppose that's, is that the most positive that we can take from this budget, the 1p? Well, the employer's allowance is a positive, Nick. Of course. Of so course. if you and I set up a little company, employ two people. You and I? Yeah. 30,000 each, we'll be quizzing. Right. So again, no aspirations we, we to grow. We, yeah, we, there's no incentive to grow. Bear in mind our corporation tax, provided we keep our profits under 50,000, will be 19%. Then after that, it's 26 and a quarter. Okay. So to summarise, guys, what are we looking at here? Tough for businesses, tough for business owners, tough when we die, tough if we're looking to buy another property. Is that about it? Sounds pretty damning, Nick. <laughs> Fantastic. So I think there are still some positives there, but you have to plan and look for them. So we've still got EOTs, Nick, remember? Yeah. So it's not, and EOTs are still there. So again, we've got that opportunity. And again, I suppose you guys do the EOT. So if anybody's looking at disposing of their business or looking to sell out, they can come and have that conversation yeah, we, with you. We love EOTs, not quite as much as the business owner who sold to an EOT for £6 million. Pounds. He was a happy... So you, had, you actually happy. had a customer that yeah, sold his business for £6 very, million? Pounds. He was a very happy chap. He's still a very happy chap. Fantastic. Paul, Jack, Charlotte, thank you for joining us here today. Pleasure, Found Nick. Very, very informative. And as I'd like to say, you know, any questions that are being raised over accountancy or this budget itself, they can always come to THL Chartered Accountants. Um, I believe your website's on the, on the links below. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us here today. The Synergy Success and Prosper Squared are here to help you grow your business. We're here to provide an education and support in any way that we possibly can. So please ensure that you click on our, our sites here. Look to follow us as where you can through our social media sites. And again, we look forward to seeing you again in the future. Thanks so much.